Well, hello. Today I'd like to welcome you to my review of an East German fountain pen. Uh, this is the East German Garant Silke. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And I'd welcome any information you have about this pen because I can't find any. I've, I found some discussions on fountain pen forums and that was it. So I'd love to hear anything you know. So let's take a look at the pen. Now you may remember a few years ago, I, I was very proud of myself. I did a review of a East German uh, Marcant. I had a model number that I've forgotten. And of course the pen was... Uh, it was a metal pen, and I, I just was like, oh, look, I've got an East German pen, and it's so cool, and I didn't think much of it. But I have gotten, so I've collected a lot more of these East German pens, and others from behind the Iron Curtain, such as this one. So, yeah, the novelty is worn off, but uh, not the pen. I kept hoping I'd find more information about it. I never did. Uh, so I'm just presenting this review of the pen as is. You can see the branding, Garant, Silka. That's it. No other branding. Uh, ordinary pen clip, nothing here, nothing here. This does unscrew. It's a blind cap. and reveals the piston turning knob. The cap unscrews. And reveals a lovely green ink window and a nib it says Garant iridium pointed and then I'm guessing that's their logo so a steel nib this is a oblique medium which you know, I'll just throw it out there that doesn't look too oblique but uh, you know the real test is how the pen writes so we're going to write with this pen this used to be just a feature of my first impressions but now I've realized it's nice to show the ink windows and such so we're gonna fill it up with some nice diatrementous aubergine uh, it has occurred to me lately that maybe I should be using the same ink for all of my reviews and just save the other inks for my pens in use. But I don't know. So maybe if you have an idea on that, let me know what you think. I'm kind of leaning, if I were to go that route, I'd probably go to a nice uh, common ink like a Parker Quink Black or something. See, one fill, and I did a pretty good job there, but I'm going to do it a couple more times. Oh, got a few air bubbles there. I enjoy the rainbow of colors, and I enjoy seeing them in other people's reviews, but at the same time, it would make it easier to compare pens if I were to use a consistent ink. You know, not Bay State Blue or anything like that, but, you know, an ink that, like I said... Parker Quink Black or Parker Quink Washable Blue were two that occurred to me. Uh, it doesn't have to be Parker. Uh, just to get a more uh, consistent experience. So I'm looking at the ink windows. It's harder to show because of the lighting. But yeah, I got a good full fill on that. So one thing I do not know is the age of the pen. At a guess, I would say 50s or 60s. Uh, but styles behind the iron curtain tended to be what's a good word different from styles on the western side of the iron curtain so it's hard to say uh, is it a flex nib no but it's got a little bounce and uh, i just happened to notice i don't know if the camera is going to pick it up one of the things i found with some of these lower quality pens not saying it's a bad pen just you know but sometimes you find the gold plating wearing off, and it's wearing off on this one. Sometimes it'll even come off if you use an ultrasonic cleaner. Something to be aware of. 
So I'm turning it like it's an oblique. Uh, we'll do my hashtag and then my little oblique test. I don't know that I got much out of that. If I do the oblique test with it like this, that's finer. I don't know. I, it may be an oblique, just not a very obliquey oblique. If that's a word. Well, we'll just keep treating it like an oblique. I don't, and, and it's a smallish pen, and usually I'm not a poster, but I am feeling some desire to post. Uh, I'm fighting the urge so far, but it is, it, that urge is hitting me. Uh, wetness and flow. I think you can tell it's wet. And I have to say, this pen it's one of the better ones I've had for showing off this ink. Uh, I mean, I just picked this ink because of a question a viewer had in the comments that I was thinking about. Um, you know, have I always used black as my everyday carry ink? And I, th yeah, yeah, I have. But then I got to thinking, you know, this would be a nice one. Oh, you totally missed that test. Um, but anyway, <laughs> then I, uh, so then I was like, oh, what pen am I going to put it in? And, well inking this one up tonight and I knew roughly how it wrote because I've used it before uh, these reviews are all pens that I've inked up several times it's been a while with this one I'll just be honest why I'm not sure just has uh, this a smear test and then I always like to do a reverse writing uh, I have found reverse <laughs> I found my uh, Oblique nibs tend to not be terribly good at this. Once while I get a surprise. Ah, uh, yeah, that's scratchy as heck. I gotta pay attention to the screen. So now, let's do a longer form writing sample. Um, I had a request a while back to do some Carl Sagan quotes. I just ran into this one today. And it seemed to fit some stuff I was reading just recently about uh, evolution deniers and let's go with it When I do these uh, videos, I always pick out, uh, almost always pick out the quote ahead of time. I knew I wanted a longer quote for this pen. Not that it's an especially flexy pen, you know. I've got pens that write much better. In, um, let's cross over the border into uh, Croatia, which back then would have been part of Yugoslavia. Uh, I love the Toes Pencala brand. And... Ironically, they used a lot of German, West German Bach nibs. But, I don't know, this pen just really appeals to me. Even though it's maybe not the nicest pen I own. So I wanted a long quote. Which I think is already telling you something about how I feel about this pen. Um, we'll do the Pierre Gustafson test. And uh, I should mention, because some people wonder about this... Uh, this is really a test of the nib and feed and, you know, just how, how well the pen can maintain a sustained ink flow. Uh, Pierre Gustafson himself recently commented on one of my videos, so it's kind of nice to be recognized. Um, and, whoops, that, that's always annoying when the fo autofocus does that. And, and he remarked, uh, I mean, he explained what the point of the test is and demonstrated it. He's better at the calligraphy thing. I'm not a calligrapher. I'm going to try and do some, I, you know, I usually just do scribbles, but I'm going to try to do something sort of calligraphy-ish, but not a calligrapher, so it's not going to be too pretty. <laughs> you 
And let's just do a squirrel one real quick. Okay. That's interesting. I'm not 100% sure if it's because I'd already used up the ink here because I can see a little railroading right there. Or if it's the nature of how I do it. So I'm not sure what to make of that. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. I need to perhaps think about how I do this test a little bit more. That was very uh, <laughs> non-committal, wasn't it? And of course, one other test that I always like to do when I do these videos is the pocket test. Okay, little effort there, but it did go in the pocket. And it slides out really easily. So, yes, it's a pocket pen. So what do I think? I think it's a good pen. Uh, and, and the nice thing with a lot of these lesser-known brands, their prices are still relatively low. Now, you'll find a few that are just like, what? <laughs> but uh, they're still relatively low. They, they've been going up. I've been seeing... Like the Toes Pen Kala pens, I, I did recently find two that were pretty low cost. But, but on the whole, I've been finding they're a lot more expensive. Uh, Senators seem to be going up in price. I'm not sure what drives it. I hope it's not me. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, this one, well, I don't remember what I paid for. I'll be honest. I don't like to give prices anyway on, on videos. Uh, but it's been enough years ago that I bought this one. I do not remember at all what I paid for it. But, uh, you know, do, do you have to be willing to shop around. You might have to be willing to clean some ink out. I have uh, two Gehas uh, sitting in the kitchen right now that uh, needed a double dose of cleaning because I thought they were clean and then they were still super inky and it's like the ink was hiding somewhere. So uh, you get that with this hobby. Um, but those are the ones you can get lower cost. If you have to do some repair work, like a resacking, then obviously no resacking here. Um, usually you're going to pay for that. Um, and, or you get the discount because it has not been done. Uh, and if it's got a better known name or a better known nib, of course, you're, you're, you're going to pay more for those. Steel nibs usually are cheaper. Uh, but you get some gems. And I think this is a good pen. This isn't, like I said, this isn't a flex pen by any means. It's just a nice, solid writer that's very satisfying to hold. And... Uh, as I think I said at the beginning, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but uh, I think it shows off this ink about the best of any of the pens I've used this ink in, which uh, wasn't what I expected when I went into filming this video, so uh, I may have found a little match there. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite taken with how this ink is looking on the paper right now. So, yeah, I... Uh, I, I was asked recently about putting numbers to my reviews. I don't like to do that because uh, it's just not objective enough. I feel like I need better criteria. And uh, it's kind of like grading in school. You grade tests and things because you have to. But, you know, kid gets an A or a B. What's that really mean? The gra grades don't mean anything, really. Um, beyond a certain level, I mean, kid gets an F or the kid gets an A. Oh, you can kind of see a little, <laughs> little difference there. But... Uh, you know, quibbling over, well, how come I got a 92 instead of a 91? Who cares? Um, that, that's why I shy away from doing numbers on these pens. But anyway, hope that was interesting, hope it was useful. Uh, East Germany is no more. They are now part of West Germany. I was in 8th grade when the Berlin Wall came down. I was, uh, well, that was the year my father was working away from home. He was, uh, we were going to move as a family, but we weren't able to yet. I, I guess for financial reasons, I don't know. I was a kid. I was a 14-year-old kid. <laughs> but uh, he was living hours away across the state, so it was just my brother and I and my mother at home. And uh, without a car, because uh, he had the car. We only had one car as a family. But anyway, it was just kind of neat to... It, it, it's something that sticks in my memory. Uh, very clearly. I, you know, I remember the protests 
in Poland and uh, Gdansk. You know, why do I know that? Why do I why do I know Lech Wałęsa? Uh, because I was just old enough then to really appreciate what was going on. I'd been interested in that part of the world anyway, and I'd read books about it and and just was interested in it. And uh, so, yeah, I I, I got to, from the sidelines. I got to live a little bit of history. Uh, if you're looking for a good TV show, uh, I would recommend Deutschland 83 and then its sequel, Deutschland 86. Now, you have to be okay with reading subtitles, but it is about an East German who uh, infiltrates West Germany as a spy. Uh, that's Deutschland 83. Deutschland, Deutschland 86, I have watched the first episode. I'm not totally clear what's going on yet. He's in Africa now, and it's you know, three years later. But uh, anyway, in, in an interesting show. <laughs> so I would recommend that. So if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And do you have an East German pen that you really like? Let us know down in the comments. Uh, I had something else I thought of during the video that I was going to bring up, but totally gone now. If you don't write it down, it's gone. Which will be part of my organizational series, which I'll get around to filming once Science Olympiad's over. So, we'll close out looking at the pen.